welcome to day four at the new allotment plot everyone we are going to get straight stuck in today and see can we sort out whatever is under this patch of grass which could be concrete could be concrete slabs i don't know let's go straight in and take a little look it is a super super blustery day my eyes are watering constantly and <laughs> the wind is just just goes straight into my and it's just started to rain so we'll see how much we get done if i can't um, if it starts raining loads, um, I did bring my seeds, so I could do some seed starting in the shed. I wanted to show you inside the shed some of the trouble that I'm having at the minute of what I've noticed. So I think we're definitely going to need a new roof. Because as you can see, there is a water line running the whole way along that slat in the roof. There is a load of water in the corner kind of just sitting, it's wet, the floor is wet, as you can see, like obviously further back here, it's dry. So I'm definitely gonna to need to do a little bit of repairing to the roof itself. So maybe get some like rolls of roof felt and sort that out. But as you're walking in here, it actually does feel like you're kind of sloping this way towards kind of this corner. So I'd say it's kind of sunken down. So I think maybe moving the sheds is on the cards to obviously lift it up. I don't think the shed is on any sort of like, blocks at the minute, you know, to keep it off of the ground. So I think that is something I definitely want to do. Whether I can get the guys on board down at the site to help me flip the whole thing, I don't know. But I need to obviously get the shed in some sort of shape because it's obviously letting in a load of water as I stepped in. I've got a massive drip on my head. So yeah, I need to get that sorted. But that's a job for another day because I'm dying to see if I can move this concrete that's in the middle of the plot because I don't need any more in the garden. I have plenty at home. <laughs> right, gloves are on. Let's go in here and see what we're dealing with. Okay. Okay, it's got a bit of a pattern on it. So I'm wondering. Okay, okay, this is positive. This is positive. Okay, so it looks like it could be paving slabs, which is good, but I don't know what they're fixed to underneath. So this is just a big carpet of grass that I'll have to pull up. And then I've got all sorts like wood as well in the way. <laughs> oh my God, this plot is full of all sorts. It's just coming up to 11 o'clock and the weather has turned miserable. So I did sit down to see would it just, the rainy spell kind of go away, but it didn't. So I decided to crack on with a little bit of my seed sowing. So this is the first seeds I'm sowing of the season. I haven't done anything yet until now. It's taken me, I was down here this morning about nine o'clock. So it's taken me about two hours and I've cleared just over halfway. So I've cleared three rows of those slabs. So when the weather kind of dries up a bit and it stops raining, I'm gonna go back out and try and finish the final row. I did originally think it was five by five, but I think it's actually five by four. As I got to the third row, the very last one closest to where all the nettles are growing out of that cage, obviously the netting, there was netting around it like chicken wire. So I'm not sure what that's about and I'm only hoping that it's not underneath all of that grass. So anyway, Enough rambling, I'm just gonna show you a couple of the seeds that I'm growing. A couple of them are kind of 
unusual varieties that I've never grown before, stuff that I've been recommended by yourself, and also some seeds that I've been sent by friends. So the compost I'm using for the seed sowing is just a general multi-purpose compost. I actually went to an amazing, amazing garden centre about two or three weeks ago to get the propagator in order to put my chilies on, and I was supposed to actually sow these chilies like three or four weeks ago, but then the allotment came through and I got sidetracked by all of the excitement of the allotment. So it never actually ended up sowing any of my chilies or using the propagator that I bought. So every, these are the trays that come with the propagator that I bought and there's some cool lids. So I'll bring these home once I have them sewn, but it's actually nice to sew them up here because at the moment they are moving the train station. So it's really noisy where I am. So all you can hear is like banging and clanging um, if I go into the garden and stuff. So it's nice to actually be able to bring this up here, even though I've got to bring it back. It's nice just to have like the peace and quiet of like just the birds tweeting because all you can hear at the minute at the house is just them trying to like pile in so, like, kind of the steel into the ground. So all you can hear over and over is doom, doom, and it like shakes the house. So, and it's not ideal for filming. So it's actually really nice just to get a break and um, be up here. So sidetracked, back to the compost. I went to this amazing garden center and I was just blown away. It's called Arboretum and they have one in Dublin and they have one in Carlo. So it's a little bit of a drive for me. I think it only took me about 40 minutes to get there, but oh my gosh, they had absolutely everything. I loved it in there. It was literally just like, like an A star, <laughs> like garden center, if that's even a thing. So I will definitely go there again. I was really impressed. All the staff were super helpful and this compost is actually made by them. So I thought I'd give it a try just to see what it was like. And it was fairly affordable. I think it was two for 14 euros. So seven euro a bag. And this is 50 liters and it has John Innes in it. So the first thing I'm gonna sow is my sweet peas because I know most people already have this done. So I'm gonna go for a beautiful Italian wild mix. It does say you can sow it from March but I know most people sow these in um, like the autumn and then they overwinter them. So I'm gonna sow them into deep pots as well. So I'm just using my Elho pots that I absolutely love that I had last year. So I absolutely love my Elho pots. So I'm gonna sow all the sweet peas in there. There's only 15 in this pack and they're gonna go into my Elho pots. I am gonna sow some more broad beans, the exact variety that I have at home. I'm gonna sow them into similar pots to the Elho just to give them a bit of depth and then if space comes available I can then plant them out here and it's basically just to be a nitrogen fixer just in case I need it but where I've lifted up the slab so far it's full of worms under there so I don't think I'm going to need to but these are Bunny Yards exhibi Exhibition. You can sow them in spring and autumn. I usually do an autumn sowing but I'm going to try a spring sowing because I have the space. Um, they grow really really tall check back on the channel you'll see how tall they grew really really super productive unbelievable and really like kind of deterrent to kind of the the black fly didn't get it till really late in the season and I should have kind of topped them anyway because they were so tall they were like taller than the downstairs windows so that's another variety that I'm going to be sowing the packet's a little bit mangled because I've used it all but I want to use up those seeds and then hopefully start to save my own seeds which would be super cool so I'm going to sow some more flowers. I have some wild organic pansies. These are from Seed Island. Aren't they such nice packaging? Really like that. <clears throat> I was going to sow leeks, but I forgot to bring a pot to put the leeks in. I normally put leeks into a big pot and sow on top. So I'll sow those when I go back home. I got a um, the chilies. The chilies that I'm going to sow are called a. Is it Aji or Aji? mango so my friend and a lot of you might know her is called Ali from the Rusty Garden um, and she sent me these seeds so along with a load of others that she said some are direct so she had a beautiful pansy that she sent me so um, she sent me these um, I think I believe she saved the seed herself she does a lot of seed saving so she sent me some beautiful tomatoes and things like that but I'm actually going to start the chili that she sent me and if you don't know who Ali is please go check her channel out I'll pop a link to her channel below um, and it's called My Rusty Garden so go and check her out she's in Canada so she has completely different weather to me and um, yeah she's a great gardener and if you like a bit of a laugh and a joke you can definitely get a laugh off of her channel so that's the seed um, and a big thank you to Ali for sharing that with me because 
I don't know, just gardening friends are the best, aren't they? Get these little packages through the post and like I don't save any of my seed because the garden's so small and it's such a sacrifice of space to keep it in. So I feel really privileged that people actually extend their kindness and send me their seeds. And then I'm going to show, sow a couple of onions, my usual white Lisbon for spring onions. I usually have these in the ground already, um, but like obviously with the redesign, I didn't have any spring onions in the ground. So usually I'd have some now that I could actually pick, but I didn't have any. And my other friend called Ali, as well as Trisha, they have a channel together um, called The Right Pear Plot. And she sent me some seeds which are little pickling onions because she knows I started my pickling journey the other day. So she sent me some silver skin pickling onions. Um, so thank you girls for that. And if you don't know either of those two, go check their channel out as well, uh, The Right Pear Plot. They have two big plots and they have a home garden as well. And like, oh, her rows are just like what I aim to have now in this plot. Her rows, her wood chip pathways, just mm. And I'll definitely be looking for some help, Trisha, on the renovation of this shed. <laughs> so check that out from those girls. And then I've got a, a flower and I've got a mix of peppers. So I've got an amazing um, pepper that I did last year that didn't actually fruit. So I have these overwintering at the minute to see if it's worth anything. But most of you guys said that it's not going to actually work. So if it doesn't work, I can sow some more. So this is called Corno de Toro Rosso. And then I have one which is for all my small space gardeners out there, which is Pepper Chocolate Mini. So I'm gonna give that a try. So I think it only grows really small. It's kind of a dwarf plant and has only small peppers that grow on it. I think you're supposed to stuff them with cheese and roast them. I think that's what it said, which sounds absolutely delicious. Anything with cheese sounds amazing. And I think that was it. So yeah, that's everything that I wanna to sew today. I forgot to bring my scissors to the plot, so I've had to rip this bag open. I am always very curious to see what the texture is like when I try a new compost, and this looks like it's going to be absolutely lovely to work with. I'm going to start off by prepping all my containers and filling them up with compost. I would love at some point to invest in one of those potting bench trays, you know the ones that hold like all the soil. I think they'd be super handy for being able to break up the chunks of compost rehydrating it and then starting to learn how to incorporate and mix in other mediums like perlite. This is my first time ever sowing sweet peas and I really hope I get good germination because I have no idea what they smell like and I have heard they are renowned for their smell and that is something I am really looking forward to experiencing this year. I have 12 pots here in total and I have popped one seed in each container. So I have never actually started broad beans in containers before. Every sowing I have done has always been direct into the ground in either October or November. So this feels a little bit strange to me. They are tough little plants and pretty much look after themselves. And whilst it's raining, I'm going to pop these outside so they can get a little drink. Now onto the chilies and the peppers. I can't wait to try and use these new trays because they are going to be used with my new propagator. So I've actually decided to try a different approach to maximize the space. So rather than using one tray to sow each of the varieties of warm loving plants, I'm going to make four mini drills in one tray and sow a variety into each drill, which means I will have three spare trays left for other things on the propagator. I'm going to sow five seeds of the chilies and both of the pepper varieties, but I also have some bell pepper seeds that I saved over a year ago from a supermarket pepper and just as a bit of fun, I thought I'd give it a go. I have loads of the home saved seeds and I am unsure as to what the germination rate will be so I'm going to go in with a slightly heavier sowing of these to compensate. I have split my tray in half to scatter sow the two varieties of onion seeds and just before the weather cleared and I sat down to have a little bit of lunch I sowed a full tray of wild pansies and some asters. It is still torrential rain down, well I say torrential, it's just still like raining quite heavy, then it stops, then it's heavy again. So I don't think I'm going to get round to the chicken cage today, but I did finish all of the slabs, they are just behind me. And I had popped out my sweet peas and my broad beans just to get wet from the rain, because I actually forgot to bring my watering can. And they've literally been out for like no time at all, and the soil is soaked. That's how much it's rained. So I'm going to get the chilies onto the propagator, and I'll show you my setup when I get home. 
When I was an Arboretum, I treated myself to a propagator. I've never owned one before, and I was going to go for the Super 7, as they seem to be a really popular choice. But I decided to go for a Garland 4 top instead, because putting plant pots on the windowsill isn't ideal. I had these lovely lemons, they are about a year old now, and I had started them from seed. And well, what seems to be happening is Rue is getting upset with the postman, and she's charging at the window, and her big paws are going straight into the lemons, and she has cracked some of the pots. When I got back from the allotment, I set up my seed starting station. I threw an old cloth over the table to protect the glass and plugged in the propagator, setting the seed trays on top. I am a little new to sowing seeds this early in the season, so I haven't yet invested in a proper grow light setup, but I do know that these plants are gonna need some light once they pop their little heads out of the soil. I'm trying to use what I have on hand, which is a studio light and two battery lights from Small Rig. To mimic natural daylight as best I can, I have set the larger light at the back to 5,600K as a midday bright light and the two smaller ones at the front to 3,500K to act as a slightly warmer hue to compensate. I am able to adjust the intensity on these so I will see how the seedlings get on. Wish me luck. It is day five and I'm not going to lie, my body is a little bit sore and I'm starting to feel the effects of owning an allotment plot. I'm going to jump straight in and tackle the cage that has all the nettles growing through it. So it's an absolutely beautiful day. I have been up here for about an hour and a half, roughly. I was up here about one o'clock. It's about half two now. So it's taken me about an hour and a half to do as much as I have on the chicken coop. And my gosh, is that a workout? I had to sit down for a bit because I was just feeling so tired from it and I like was getting like warm. Obviously I've had to keep my jumper on because as I was doing it obviously I took my jumper off but then I, I cut the bottom of my elbow so I didn't want to get like unwell from like the dirty metal so I put some sanitizer on it, set my jumper back on but like it's really really warm <laughs> so I'm working up quite the sweat trying to get this out but it basically what's happened is underneath the chicken coop I've managed to get most of the wire off apart from what's left on the back corner of it and what's happened is underneath the chicken coop is like the nettles have rooted in so much that they've wound around the metal so I can't actually get it up because the roots are so thick so I've actually like I know I'm supposed to be doing like no dig but I'm gonna have to dig them up in order to get that frame up because I'm physically not strong enough to be able to pull it up so I've given it a few whacks with the the pickaxe I was able to get most of it out but I've got one last thing to do and that's will release the last sort of peg that's on the fence that's this side so I still have to do the opposite side of the fence and there's not as much room around that side and there's more nettles around that side so I've sat on nettles I've been poked in the eye with nettles <laughs> so my, my whole body and arms and everything is just like <laughs> really hurting right now um, but yeah so that's the chicken coop progress so far i'm also going to nip back up to the car and get a block of wood to fill over the hole a load of you said in the comments to fill the hole that's um in the shed or not fill the hole fix it so i have a slat of woods a couple of screws so i'm just going to drill that over the hole that's in the shed and that keeps any critters out of the shed hopefully so this section here is the bit that i'm kind of struggling with at the minute so obviously you can see there's a big mound of nettles but it's actually this post here that i'm trying to take out so there's a little metal frame there that's then obviously sunken into the ground underneath and the wire that attaches along the way is completely underneath all of these nettles and you can see that it's wrapped around the metal completely so it's really really difficult to get it up so i haven't got the best upper body strength <laughs> and rue can hear me like huffing and puffing and she keeps, keeps crying because I think she thinks like I'm in pain or something I don't know so I have to keep like telling her I'm okay and then telling her to go away so she doesn't get whacked by the pickaxe so yeah but I couldn't leave her at home today because, because when I got home yesterday I, I just saw like a load of like um, the dog food tins they were all over the living room and I was like what on earth is going on cardboard boxes in ripped up so I was like what on earth so she'd actually gone into the pantry taken out a 12 pack of dog cans off of the shelf brought them into the living room because that's where her bed is ripped them all up and there was dog cans everywhere so again another protest for not bringing her to the plot so I said to myself oh I'll bring her today and she was super excited the minute I put my shoes on she was so excited to get out and then like she'd been crying since she's been getting here so I don't know what's up with her <laughs> so that is the hole in the floor repaired 
and some good progress on the chicken cage is taking a little bit longer than I actually thought it was going to be but I have to get home to cook myself a beautiful Sunday dinner so I will see you next week's video bye and it's got John's John Innes in it even though I'm not quite sure what John Innes is because I